Hello right bags, it's Jade. Welcome to a No Man's Sky Beyond guide. Today, part two of Power Basics. First part, I showed you how to connect your bases up with basic power using solar panels, switches, as well as the biofuel generator and batteries. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on power and industry, basically how to get more minerals and gas resources, as well as use the electromagnetic field generator. So don't forget to like, really helps the channel out, and make sure you subscribe for the best in survival games, news, information, and guides. And let's crack on with Power Industry Part 2. If you haven't unlocked them already, you need to head up to the Anomaly or a space station and find yourself a construction module. In here, you'll find the blueprints for the mineral extractor, the gas extractor, and the electromagnetic generator. You're going to need five metal plating and 100 chromatic metal and you possibly will need some nanites to unlock it too. The gas extractor is pretty much the same, five metal plating and 100 chromatic metal once again. The electromagnetic generator only needs two metal plating, 60 magnetized ferrite and 75 chromatic metal. Hopefully you've already unlocked all the other blueprints required for power, including wiring, obviously, to get to this point. And you are also going to need one more upgrade. You're going to need the survey device, which you can get from travelling merchants, or in the anomaly or space station from one of the merchant stations. Once you have this blueprint, you'll be able to craft up a survey device, which basically gives you another option when analysing your environment. It costs three sodium diodes to install, one cobalt mirror, and two wiring looms. Once active in your visor, you'll be able to see a more orange tinge to items in the world, and it will list different parameters that you're gonna to have to gauge to find the hotspots needed where you can put your industry construction modules down. Every planet has at least one type of either gas, electricity, or a mineral deposit. And so far, I've not found one planet that doesn't have at least all three. But before we start showing you how to find the deposits quickly, let's just go briefly over what they are. They're pretty simple explanations. The mineral extractor is gonna get you big bulky minerals that you can extract over time. Normally one hour, you'll get a big amount and you can put this in special storage bins and that you can gather later to go and sell or do stuff with like craft. Minerals and gases are measured on the S spectrum, so you'll find certain resources labeled B, they'll be more valuable, some resources are gonna be labeled S or A, and they're gonna be some of the most valuable. It's worth scouting around for the higher class uh, quality of them, so looking for A or S, as you will find different qualities. This one's a B, you can see it's got the symbol of the pickaxe, which obviously means it's a mineral. The next resource is concentrated gas cloud. This one is quality A, and I've had to go further out from where I was. Like I said, you will find all of these types of resources like the gas cloud, mineral big deposits, and you can just simply put your machinery on top of it and farm it all out. And the power side of things comes from the electromagnetic fields that you're gonna be searching for. This one I found actually in the ocean and it took a good while. Sometimes because this is quite a rare resource or it's a rare power supply, you will have to go further out to look for it. It just depends on where you are, what type of planet it is as well. But you can see it's got the lightning symbol, so we're getting close to this. This is gonna give us much more power than you get from a biofuel generator or even using something like the solar panels. So that is all three resources, two resources you're going to be actually selling on or using to craft and the third resource which is power which is going to be good for your bases or for just setting up more mining situations. Go ahead and install your survey device in your gun or your multi-tool and you're good to go. Once equipped, you'll be following the little white lines that are flashing in front of you. It's going to give you directional markers where to follow and you're looking for that hotspot proximity. You need to get it all the way down until 1.2, 1.3 before it'll actually start letting you analyze. That will then give you the marker and you can plonk your device down. Now you can plot lots of these all in around the area once you've located the hotspot and you'll get more resources generated. So make sure you've got plenty of resources to build as many of these generators as you can if you go in explicitly looking for this type of energy or this type of resource. You can see I'm analyzing it now as I did come up onto the main part of the hotspot and I've discovered it, it is a, just a gas cloud of nitrogen. This one is an S-Class and it's concentration of 400. That's pretty good. That's one of the best you're gonna get. 
you will run into deposits where the concentration might only be 200 etc and they'll probably be labeled C class. One glitch or one thing I'll notice particularly on console at the moment though is when you're in a hotspot it can be hard to go and look for other hotspots within that zone so you will have to go out of range of the hotspot that you're in and sometimes that hotspot can be pretty large. I've seen in other videos and other pieces on the forums that that is a glitch that's actually happened because of other glitches or other updates that have come in. Originally it was highlighting and showcasing some of these hotspots a lot clearer. But the reason I'm saying this now is though I don't want you getting confused if you are looking for more hotspots. You will find other resources, just got to go maybe a little bit further out, get in your ship and fly a little bit further. Make sure obviously you've claimed your base so you can start putting all your stuff down. Obviously you're going to have to do that as well. And it's a good way to show exactly where the hotspots are if you are going to be going up and down from here to the space stations or the anomaly to sell items or sell the stuff that you're actually harvesting. So you've got your hotspot. We're going to go for it now. I'm going to put our gas extractor down. This is the first part of what you're going to be doing. Also, you're going to need a supply depot pretty much you're going to need a few of these. You can make massive farms and they can generate millions of credits and units over space of time so that you can never really run out of money. That's going to be coming in a future video. You may have already seen these big huge farms but a lot of them videos that I've already seen don't really adequately explain how to get to that stage. You're also going to be thinking maybe about getting a power generator like this. If you're very, very lucky, you'll have a source of the electromagnetic field nearby. Otherwise, you may have to rely on biofuel generators until there's daylight. The biofuel generators obviously run out, so they're not the best source. So you're going to have to switch to solar power and batteries as quickly as you can. Whatever supply of power you're using, obviously connect it up with just normal electricity cables. But from the generator itself to your storage container, you're going to need a brand new uh, wire, which is pretty much the supply wire or supply tubes. These can be a little bit finicky to connect. There's only one connection point on your generator and one connection point on your uh, containers. And as you can see, sometimes it is just a little bit derpy how you place them. So be very careful, come in and out of it if it doesn't really connect correctly. You will notice as well that your power supply bins I have still got the power supply marker saying they're out of power. That's not true, they're just not full up yet. They'll start filling up once you've got power going to the generator. The supply chest, the supply bins will keep that little red lightning symbol even though it is actually working and you are gaining resources. So like I said, you guys I'm sure will start developing your own way to do this or go and watch one of them big farm tutorials how you can make millions of credits. I was just doing this really quick and easy just to show you the basics. So excuse my poor placements, but make sure you have got a few batteries going and you've got solar panels and you should be okay. You don't necessarily need the electromagnetic generator, but that is something I'm going to show you at the end just to see how much more power it generates compared to a biofuel generator or the solar powers. If you click on the supply depot, it will show you exactly how much supply it can hold. I've got it cooked up with three of them, so it can hold up to 4,250. And I'm gaining 1,000 of the nitrogen resource per hour. It also lists how exactly long it's going to take for the storage bins to fill up. So in four hours, 10 minutes, I'll have filled up every single one of them. I'm using a mineral extractor here and you can see the storage just on its own is quite small, it's only 250, yet I'm outputting 500 per hour. So I'm obviously not going to be able to extract the full amount in that hour, so that's why you definitely need lots of the storage units to hold the excess in. You can see the paraffinium from here is going to be all exhausted in an hour or exactly that's how long I've got in this cycle and then I will get 500 per cycle. You can see the density as well. This is a B class. It's giving me 2000 kg M3 on the left hand side there. So again, a fairly decent one, but there are better obviously like A and S. I've added a storage bin and you can see that in 2 hours 26 minutes it's going to be full and overall with the storage bin and the generator I can hold 1250 of the paraffinium. So not only do you need to have lots of generators but you do need lots of supply chests as well or if you really haven't got the resources to make the generators you could just output from one generator to multiple supply chests and just leave it a bit longer and you will keep generating more units or more resources. 
But ideally, to be the most efficient, you probably want a good five or six of these going, maybe even more, create as big as you can in that spo space in the hot zone area, pumping out to just as many of the supply chests. For this gas one, you can see I'm pumping out 750 per hour, and I'm gonna fill my storage I've currently got connected fairly quickly in an hour and 39 minutes because it only holds 1250 overall with the generator and the storage bin. Supposedly these will actually gather stuff over time as well even if you are not playing the game. I haven't tested that fully but that's what it says in the patch notes that it will generate resources even while you're not playing. So the big bucks come in the form of the A and S. You can see here I'm going to make 15,000 units by selling 750 of the nitrogen that I've gathered over the course of just one hour. And that's how you're going to make your millions by having lots of these set up on one planet or in one location. Remember the hotspots can be pretty large. You are going to make absolute bucket loads. The only things to note, caution, are that the hotspots do have better density in and around different spots. You can use your visors to check for the density. That's what that little number is at the bottom of the flashing lights there. It just shows you exactly what the density is of the resource if you're aiming or roughly give or take. And of course on the left hand side you can see the little menu. That will also show you the density once you've scanned it appropriately, exactly how much it is. This concentration of A-class gas cloud is worth 3,000 per hour. And the last note of caution is make sure you don't run out of power. Obviously with your batteries and your solar panels, if you're on a planet that has nighttime quite a lot, you've got to be careful of that. It will halt production of your resources going into your supply depot. Now obviously I've been doing all this in creative mode just to show you guys quickly, but I found a really awkward one here. The electromagnetic field was the hardest to find out of the three resources. I had to go pretty much far and wide across the planet to find a field. Once I've found one and I've got it run into a battery, it's kind of a bit pointless. You need this really to be close to your base or some way that you can get the power to run all the way to wherever your base is. So whether or not using loads of wires, I'm not sure. But the electromagnetic generator just generates electricity. There's nothing you can do with it. You can't hold it. You can't put it into a container. It's literally just a generator for power. So don't panic too much if your base is all powered up or you're just using a planet just to mine if you find an electromagnetic one or you don't find one i wouldn't necessarily go for it i would actually go for more mineral deposits and gas deposits you're really only going to need this if you have got a base nearby or you find a good location where you want to set up your base it's worth checking to see if there's electromagnetic field nearby you can also see the power output is five times the amount of a biofuel reactor, so that's why people do like it. If you do get lucky enough to have one near your base or you decide to build your base near one, it can do a lot in terms of powering up your base. And you can set up even more electromagnetic generators, so you can have a big farm of them, creating a huge battery that could power up your base if it's nearby. If I've got anything wrong, please let me know. If you've got any tips about how you can port your power that you're getting, also let me know. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe you can transport the power that you're generating. But as far as I'm aware, you have to just run it through to batteries and then make the batteries run through to wherever else you want it to go or directly to your base pieces. Let me know what you're doing with No Man's Sky. How are you finding power up? It's been polarizing. Lots of people are saying they don't like it. It's made it busy work. Other people said it's really good. Let me know in the comment section down below. I hope this guide's been helpful, teaching you the basics and pretty much now the advanced stuff in terms of power and industry. The next part of my tutorial is going to be on what you can do and trying out some cool methods showing you guys what to do with the switches, the light boxes. The light boxes are bugged at the moment. You can't get hold of them unless you're in creative mode. But hopefully that will be patched soon and hopefully I can show you some cool stuff to make. I am Jade. I do guides and tutorials on survival games and give you the news you need to know about and coming to console. Make sure you've subscribed, you've got notification bell ticked on and come share some of your base build pictures in my Discord. Until next time, Ratbags, I will see you later.